The first question that we need to answer is why. Why should we bother to create a completely different 3D file for a 3D floor plan? And the answer is simple. Think about your architectural visualization as a three-stepping reading or a three-step story. The beginning, the localizing, and the end. The first part is the beginning, the cover of the book. So the client needs to see what's going on, what's up about this architecture. For that reason, the first step is to show what? The facade, the exterior rendering, to show the main body of the project. The second step is to localize the client. And the third step is to show the interiors, what is inside of that architecture. So the 3D floor plan will work more like a map to make sure that the client knows where he is when he starts to look around your interior renderings and see what's going on inside of that architecture. So if you don't know me, my name is Augusto Cesar, I work with architectural visualization and in this video I'm gonna teach you how to create a proper and professional 3D floor plan inside of Blender. If you are not subscribed to this channel, so make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so every time I post a new video, you will be awarded, okay? If you would like to know how to do what I'm gonna show you right now in a step-by-step -step tutorial, well, I have a link in the description below where you can know more about my complete architectural visualization course, but you can know more about that clicking in the link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. How to create a 3D floor plan inside of Blender. So the first step is to gather as much reference images as possible about the type of 3D floor plan you would like to present to your clients. So in this type of projects, we prefer to be more artistic than realistic. So gathering some, some reference, we're gonna decide how we're gonna approach this type of project. So the first step is to gather reference, organize those reference in a pure ref file or something like that. You can save it on your computer as well, but it's important to know where you are going so we won't lose time during the process. The second part of this project is to import the 3D floor plans inside of Blender. So here in this channel, I teach you how you can import several different files inside of Blender. But in this case, I prefer to use images as planes. So I take all the PDF files from the original project, the architectural projects, and convert it on images. And then I import those images inside of Blender, rescale it to make sure that the scale is correct. So I take a reference point like a door or a window or some part of the project that I know exactly what is the size and I use that point as a reference point to scale my image until it fits more or less the correct size. So I'm not getting totally precise, but I get closer enough to the scale. And this is crucial because if you will realize that the scale is wrong in the middle of the project, it will be too late. The third step here is to model the exterior and the interior walls. So I, I usually separate those walls in different sections. So the exterior and the interior walls are separated to keep me organized. And this is the most straightforward part actually because all I need to do is to take a plane and extrude that plane around my scene easy as that but usually I prefer to add door openings in windows with building operations because I can just create an object that will fit in every part of my project and then I use the add-on boom tools to remove some parts of the other objects with a boolean operation, a subtract boolean operation. A small tip that I can give you is that if you are working with an architectural visualization interior and you would like to use booleans to make your openings and make sure that you will get to the final result fast, a tip that I can give you is to place some loop cuts on top of the doors and on top of the windows. Uh, doing that, you will get a little bit extra geometry, but you will have a perfect point where the boolean operation will have a support loop, so you won't get those diagonal lines around when we place windows around our scene. To do the floor, I just make a plane and I cut that plane in the correct size and then I use the limited dissolve to remove all the extra geometry. Here I don't care too much about angles because everything will be, will be straight, so why care about angles here? I prefer to have a clear viewport than have a lot of loop cuts throwing off my attention. So after that, I take the face on top of my floor and I use that face to create my floor plans inside of Blender using the arc pack add-on. And the arc pack add-on has an amazing feature. This feature allows you to take a face, 
convert it to a curve and use that curve to cut on top of a floor, allowing you to create a complex floor easy. You can see how I can do that on the screen. So, when I finish the modeling process, I start to think about the materials. And the materials, I usually think in two different types of materials. The communication materials and the realistic materials. The communicate materials is a material that I create just to communicate what the client is looking. So, for example, we know that walls are made of concrete, are made of bricks, or things like that. But, usually, we don't design concrete and we don't design things like that to show that it's exactly concrete inside of that, that cut. Because a floor plan is a section cut where you are seeing from the top view. So, as we want to place a concrete material on top of the walls, I prefer to put a communication material. A black material that allows the client to understand that this is a wall. It's not a realistic wall, but this is a wall and I know that this is a wall. It's communicating something. The realistic materials you're gonna apply as usual. You can use add-ons or tools or libraries, anything like that. You can download it from the internet, but we're gonna apply materials as, <laughs> as usual because they are not so different. You have a lot of artistic liberty here because you can do whatever you want because here we are not really caring too much about realism and more about communication but it's more of the same in any interior or exterior shot. The doors and the windows are also simpler objects that I prefer to create something easier to the eyes to allow the client to understand that this is a door and I don't need to create a lot of details on that. I just need something simple, quick and dirty to allow the client to know, okay, this is a door. I don't need a realistic door, I, don't need, I just need to know. So those objects are more to communicate than to impress someone else with the realism or things like that, you know? After that, I just take the baseboard of my model, which is simple. I just take a section, extrude it up and apply a solid fire modifier to make it easier. Or you can go around your scene, extrude the plane, do whatever you want. To apply material on the floor is the same process, but in the floor I prefer to use the random per island option in the geometry node. Not in the geometry nodes, but in the geometry node that you can add on the shader editor. That option allows you to change a little bit the color randomly according to the faces on the UV map. This allows us to create a little bit of variation in the colors of each wood plank and it brings a lot of detail in the final of the project. So, the bathroom material, I make it different. I prefer to create a plane and keep it separated from the rest because I have more control doing that. It's easier and quicker to work in that way. And I used some materials from this website, Ambient CG, where I get most of my textures because they are free and they are really high quality. After that is a matter of add some assets and I use several different types of asset libraries here. Some are free, some are paid, but it's just a matter to distribute your assets accordingly to the drawings of the architectural project. And this is really important because in this stage of the process is curious because you need to shrink down some of the objects to make sure that they will fit on the floor plan. Because when we are talking about architectural visualization, we are talking more about communication than something extremely beautiful or realistic. Something can be really realistic and at the same time extremely hard to read. So think about communication more than beauty in this case. So finally, I organize my file, making sure that my collections are in a good spot and I prepare my file to the final handling. So, to prepare the final rendering, I prefer to use a orthographic camera because we don't want to see those diagonal lines coming from the top. We, I really prefer to have a map. So, in this case, I'm looking for a real map, something that's easier to understand more than beauty. Don't get me wrong, this should be beautiful, but first I need to think, okay, I need to communicate this as quickly and as efficient as possible. How can I do that? So the orthographic camera is amazing for that because we don't want to have those corners or those, those lines that will be hiding things behind walls that we can't see from the top. 
So I use the orthographic camera because of that. And then I select an HDRI map with soft shadows that will allow me to have more like an ambient light, a few light that will fill my scene in a good way. And then I add the sunlight to get some shadows. And then I change a little bit the settings of that sunlight to get more soft shadows because my intention here is not to get as realistic as possible, but to get a more volume to my scene, allowing my client to get a easier time reading that 3D floor plan. And finally, I do the post-production on Photoshop. Usually, for this type of project, I just save the final rendering and a ambient occlusion pass, because that ambient occlusion pass, I will use that to bring more volume to my scene. As I told you, my main focus in this type of project is to communicate something as quick and efficiently possible. So on Photoshop, I just use Camera Raw to bring a little bit of the details, bring some contrast, making a little bit of a white balancing to make sure that everything is crystal clear. I applied some LUT, use the ambient occlusion map to bring more volume and show up a little bit more of the shapes in my scene. And finally, this is the final result. So, as I told you, if you'd like to know how to do that kind of project step by step, the link for my full course is in the link in the description below. So click in the link in the description below to know more about the details, okay? Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so every time I post a new video, you will know that immediately, okay? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video. Bye, take care.